What do the following things have in common? Unicorns, UFOs, kryptonite, and alpha. Today's video topic. And the answer is, none of them probably exists. Or if they do, they're not much use to investors. All right, alpha is today's video topic. Let's take a look at what it is, why the fund management industry likes you to know about it, and why I'm a little bit skeptical about how useful it is to the average investor. Now, this is not a degree course video. Go somewhere else for that. This is simply a quick and dirty guide to what alpha is and should you trust it. Okay, alpha is often used by the fund management industry for one reason, to sell more funds. Okay, the way it's often been used uh, recently is you get a certain type of fund, hedge funds, for example, absolute return funds, who claim to be high alpha. Certain managers might claim to be high alpha. All right, what does that mean? All right, well, it means, in essence, that the fund claims to add value over and beyond the normal call of duty. In other words, the fund claims to outperform a benchmark of some sort, and that outperformance is down to the skill of the fund manager. The implication is that without the fund manager, that outperformance wouldn't be possible, and that benefits you as the investor. And of course, a cynic would say, it benefits the fund manager as well, because alpha is used to justify quite high performance fees, otherwise would be quite tricky to justify. All right? So there it is. Um, there are other letters of the Greek alphabet that permeate the financial markets, like beta and delta, for example. This is all about the first one, alpha. Now, what specifically is alpha? I mean, what exactly is the claim here? Well, there are uh, essentially two types of alpha. Uh, alpha, just spelt like that. All right, two types of alpha. There is what I call fund alpha, and there is security-based alpha. Now, what do I mean by that? Both similar idea, all right? It's all about capturing the performance almost you weren't expecting to get, heavy hint that's been added by the fund manager. What do I mean by the performance you're expecting to get? Well. Um, there is a thing out there called the Capital Asset Pricing Model, which I cover in another video that talks about why uh, the city's share pricing model is bust. Because I'm not going to do a lot of detail on it here. But there is a model out there that basically calculates the return you should expect to get from a given portfolio or a given share or security. All right, And that model is built on something called beta. And beta, I cover in another video, rather unimaginatively entitled, What is Beta? All right, so what I'm about to say is built on two things Cap M, covered in one video, and beta, covered in another. But essentially, what that model that uses beta tries to do is it says, Here's the return you can expect to get from a fund or a security. Anything else on top is alpha. Anything else that that model doesn't predict you should expect to receive is fund manager added value. Now I can distill that down a bit, turn it to plain English, and say, actually on the left here, it pretty much works a little like this. All right? Imagine a fund has set itself up and called itself the UK Equity Alpha Fund. All right? And they want you to put your money in, and the fund manager has said, I'm going to take out 2% every year as a management charge. That's 2% of the value of the fund, whether it goes up or down every year. That's, that's mine. It's going in my pocket. And 20% of any extra performance I generate, any alpha. Okay, you can probably see where this is going now if you're a fund manager. Um, so what would that extra return be? What would you get your 20% of? Well, let's say the benchmark is the FTSE 100. That's the leading index of UK shares. If you're not sure what that is, check out my video, which is all about indices, okay, in my series. So let's say the FTSE 100 rises 10% over a year, for example. And this sexy fund, the UK Equity Alpha Fund, I think I'll call it, the fund, okay, manages to rise by 12% over the same period. The fund manager could claim, without going into the depth of portfolio theory, the fund manager could claim, well, look, that extra bit, that extra 2% is alpha. Okay? And if you turn that into a number, the extra 2%, 
they might say, and I'm having 20% of that in my pocket because that's extra value I've generated for my investors. Okay? On this side, you can also do this sort of on individual shares. Here I'm assuming it's kind of a portfolio. On this side, you could say, well, the CAPM model, the capital asset pricing model, if you're not sure what that is, check out the video I mentioned earlier on on the city's pricing model. Um, that model might suggest that a security with a particular risk factor called beta, again, see the video there, um, might, the CAPM model might predict a return over a given period of, say, 5%. If the actual return is 7%, then 2% is the alpha. Now, I've summarized a heck of a lot of theory to get to those two points, but that really, as an investor, is most of what you need to know. Alpha is the claimed extra return that the fund or a security within a fund has generated over and above that that the CAPM model predicts. Now, you might think so far so good. Well, if you generate 12% when the benchmark's only doing 10, 2% extra return for investors, well, why not have 20% of that as a fund manager? Well, here are some of the problems, okay? Here are some of the problems. First of all, if you're defining alpha as the extra return over what the CAPM model predicts using beta, all I need to tell you is if you don't know what the CAPM model is and have got no intention of finding out, it is a massive lump of assumptions. Okay, it's a load of judgments. CAPM sounds scientific, but it requires you to make a whole load of judgments. And you're saying that anything extra that's generated as return over and above that is fund manager added value. Well, I'd say that's a little bit of a stretch, actually. It's, uh, it assumes that you have complete faith in the underlying model to generate the required expected return correctly in the first place. And I have some doubts, as you'll see in my other videos. Secondly, this is all incredibly short-term. You'll get fund managers saying, well, look, over a very short-term period, I outperformed the benchmark. I want my extra 20%. Mm. But really, how can you separate over a short-term period luck and judgment? Frankly, how do you know this 12%, this extra 2%, was down to fund manager skill? Okay, you really need quite a few time periods. Five, 10 years, then come back to me and say, I generate alpha. Not just one to three, as has happened in the past. So Alpha's been used as an excuse for a fund manager to make a very short-term return, take money off the table, pocket it, and then subsequently many of those absolute return funds and hedge funds have kind of nosedived, but by then it's too late. You see, because the performance fee isn't, isn't uh, refundable when the fund collapses. Right? It's kind of a one-way ticket for the fund manager. So Alpha's used in that way to justify some extraordinary short-term fee structures. Okay. Third, um, you know, reason why I have a problem with alpha is that the past is no guide to the future. All right? And in any case, fourthly, if you like, what are you actually going to do with it? I mean, if I tell you, for example, that um, three funds out of 20 have outperformed massive alpha, what are you going to do? Pile into them? Okay? Because how do you know those same three funds will keep on performing at the top of the sector for any length of time? Okay, just based on the alpha generation over a very short-term performance period. Very few fund managers, in reality, outperform long-term. Even the stars of the market, like Anthony Bolton, once the UK's arguably most successful fund manager, okay, got himself into deep trouble when he got, went into China with this, you know, the new special situations fund. Uh, he suddenly found out that you know, that was a very different environment to invest in um, than the one perhaps he'd been used to in the past. Okay, so even the best fund managers can fail. And therefore, my advice would be this. When you look at a fund, there are two elements that matter. Cost is one, performance is the other. But the problem is this, cost is known. You are going to pay those, those 2 and 20 fees. The performance, who knows? So I must admit, I'd be inclined not to buy the Alpha Story hook, line and sinker and pay for a very expensive fund. I'd be more tempted if I was looking at UK equities, for example, to pay for a much cheaper passive fund. All right, risk losing a little bit of alpha, if it exists, maybe it doesn't, because at least then I know I'm getting a cheap product, okay, rather than one that's much more expensive, where the returns, frankly, are just as uncertain. 
download this free video to your favourite mobile device, find us on iTunes by searching for Money Week. And the entire video archive is also available free, just visit moneyweek.com.